Assalamualaikum. Um, having completed part 1, we are now ready for part 2. This is just a continuation of video 1 from video pack 3 uh, of BJT device from the bipolar junction transistor video series. Uh, we have completed common base configuration. We will now look at common emitter configuration. We're going to go through the same flow. Okay, so this is the emitter arrangement and BJT can be connected in an amplifier with the emitter being the closest terminal to the ground. So uh, you may have another component here uh, between the emitter and the ground, but it is still the closest to the uh, ground. So this is just an example. This is not covered in this slide. Uh, this is an example of such a configuration. So if you have NPN, the N uh, side of the emitter is closest to the ground and you have the PNP, the P side of the emitter is closest to the ground. The emitter terminal is common to both input and output connections. Um, when it was common base, it was the base terminal that was common to both input and output connections. To fully describe the behavior of the common emitter amplifiers, uh, two sets of characteristics are required. One is the input characteristics and another is the output characteristics. Just the same as in the common base. Except that now the input is base current, IB, versus VBE. And um, the output characteristics is now IC versus VCE. Input characteristics. Now this curve here um, is, uh, shows IB versus VBE. And we know that IB is the input current and VBE is the input voltage. This curve shows the relationship between the input current IB to input voltage VBE for three output voltage VCE levels. Okay, So for the emitter base uh, junction to turn on, the forward bias must exceed VBE approximately 0 0.7 volts for majority carriers from emitter to be injected to base. Okay, So if we know that we're going to um, say uh, have 0 0.8 VBE and let's say we know that VCE is going to be um, uh, 1 volt we can expect IB um, uh, required is about 60 uh, microamps so if you bias the transistor with 60 microamps it will turn on at around um, 0 0.8 if the VCE is 10 volts. Okay. So output characteristics. The output characteristics relates the output current IC to an output voltage VCE for various levels of input current IB as shown. So this is your output current IC uh, for various levels of input current IB as shown here. So IB now is the value that you set for the sweep of VCE versus IC. So as you sweep VCE, um, you measure IC uh, for different uh, values of fixed IB. This is what you have. Okay? The, you call it as a family of curves. And this output characteristics has three basic regions. Okay? One is called uh, cutoff region below here. Another is the saturation region. And this middle portion here uh, is the active region. So in the active region, base emitter junction is forward biased and collector base junction is reverse biased, just as we mentioned a few slides ago. And NPN, once it turns on, VBE is 0 0.7 volts because it's just like a PN junction if it's a silicon. And to make um, collector base junction reverse biased, VCB has to be greater than 0 volts. For this region, uh, this region is normally employed for linear or undistorted amplifiers. Uh, also, uh, good to note that IB is in microamp, so it's small compared to milliamp of IC. Okay, so the input current is small, the output current is large. Uh, also, IB uh, are not as horizontal as those obtained for IE in the common base configuration. Okay, for common base configuration, it was IC versus um, VCB for different sets of IE. E. But here we have IC versus VCE for different sets of IB uh, because our input and output uh, terms are not different. Okay, But if we compare previously, IE 
was quite flat. Okay, and here um, it's not. So it's not as horizontal as those, those obtained for IE in the common base configuration. And this indicates that the collector emitter voltage VCE will influence the magnitude of IC. Even though it sort of goes into a saturation, but it's not exactly in the active region because as uh, VCE increases, you will find that IC will also increase for specific values of IB. So in the cutoff region, cutoff region is the one below. Um, cutoff region in the common Ebenezer configuration is also not as well defined as for the common base configuration. So IC here is non-zero. is quite a significant um, value, but um, um, not, not a significant value, but it's not almost zero as it was with uh, the common emitter, a uh, common base configuration. And in the saturation region, this side here, okay, VCE is less than VCE set. All right, so if we were to operate uh, amplifiers in this region, uh, it would not be linear. And um, if you're handling a signal, uh, the signal will be distorted. Okay, so relating IC and IE, even though the transistor configuration has changed, the current relationships developed earlier for the common base configuration are still applicable. So you still have, because these are standard KCL, so you still have IE is equals to IC plus IB, and you can still have IC is equals to alpha IE. Okay, considering leakage currents, IC is equals to alpha IE plus ICBO, because that's what we said just now, when it's a common emitter configuration, it's not um, the minority um, uh, carry the leakage current uh, is quite significant. So ICBO, which is the minority collector current, uh, but it is usually so small that it can be ignored, except in high power transistors and high temperature environments, which is why it is included here, just so that we know that if we are going to design circuits for uh, power transistors or power applications or high temperature environments, it has to be included. Now, when IB is equal to zero microamp, the transistor is cut off, but there is some minority current, uh, current flowing um, called ICEO. So this is related to ICBO uh, divided by 1 minus alpha. This is just some additional knowledge for you. And if you do um, uh, deeper, if you go deeper into semiconductor devices, you will see uh, more uh, considerations of non-ideal behavior that will be included. Okay. Beta, so common emitter current gain. So you had alpha, which is the common base amplification factor, which was the previous section before this. But now we're doing the common emitter uh, section. And common emitter has uh, an amplification factor and it's called beta. Okay, common emitter amplification, amplification factor. In the DC mode, beta is equals to IC over IB. And it's in the range of 50 to 400. Unlike alpha, which is almost equals to 1, which is why IC is almost equals to IE. Okay, And it makes sense here because we said that IB is in the microamp region and IC is in the milliamp region, so you would expect beta to be in the hundreds. And in AC mode, um, beta AC can be found by the uh, changes of IC with respect to changes of IB at a constant VCE. Um, we may not be using much of this uh, in the next section, but beta IC is sometimes referred to as HFE, which is a term used in transistor modeling calculations quite often, which you may see in higher courses. So relating alpha and beta. Now starting from KCL and replacing IC and IB, hence cancelling IC. This is a familiar um, KCL equation relating IE to IC and IB. You can use alpha, which is equals to IC over IE, and beta, which is equals to IC over IB, to find the relationship between amplification factors beta and alpha. So alpha is equals to beta over beta plus 1, and beta is equals to alpha over alpha minus 1. Now, relationship between currents. Beta provides a direct link between current levels of input and output circuits for a common emitter configuration, meaning that you have um, IC is equals to beta IB. And IC is an output uh, term and IB is an input term. And you can relate IE to IB with an IE is equals to beta plus 1 IB. 
Alright, so here's an example. This is a ex simple example just to show how to read graphs. So using the characteristics of figure 3.13, get this, this value figure 3.13 here. I think this one came from the text ball stat. Uh, we need to determine IC if IB is 30 microamps and VCE is 10 volts. So IB is 30 microamps. Okay. This 30 microamps, we don't actually need uh, the input characteristics for this value here because you have IB already found to be 30 and VCE is 10 volts. Okay, here. So the X, the Y axis, which is uh, IC, is 3.4 milliamps. Okay, the second example here, it says um, now you determine IC at a given VBE, not IB, but a given VBE and a given VCE. So if I look at this plot here, I don't have uh, values of IB. So I need to find IB from this plot. Okay, but I know VBE is 0 0.7. And if VBE is 0 0.7, I'll find um, um, IB to be about 20 microamps. Of course, if you have a proper um, graph in front of you, you can actually magnify and find um, the values more accurately. So if you have IB equals to 20 microamps, which is this plot here, we're looking at this plot, okay. Um, and VCE is given to be 15 volts, okay. All right. So your value of uh, IC is going to be about 2.5 milliamps at the intersection of IB equals to 20 microamps and VCE is equals to 15 volts. So IC is about here. 2.5 milliamps. So wh what we're trying to say here is that you see these plots are given for the transistor. Um, this biasing values is what you want to either target for so that you want to design it or it's given to you because you're going to put the BJT in a specific circuit. Okay. So you will see the significance of this. Maybe you won't see it now in this slide, from this slide, but give yourself some time. You will understand why it is useful when you do DC biasing later. Okay. Also another example, sometimes you're given the graph, but you don't have the value of beta. You can find that out. So if it's going to be beta AC, you can find uh, delta uh, IC divided by delta IB. And, and if you say, say, let's say you take it at about VCE 7.5 volts, you're going to find it to be around 100. But if you do beta DC, maybe you get about 108. So about the same if you, if it doesn't uh, really um, give you any effect. Okay, done with common emitter configuration. Now we'll look at common collector configuration. Okay, common collector configuration is just going to be really short. Okay. Common collector configuration is used primarily for impedance matching purposes. Okay. Sometimes you have input and output and the impedance don't match. So you have the common collector configuration in the middle. Okay. So it has a high input impedance and low output impedance. Okay. Opposite to that of the common base and common emitter configurations. Meaning that if you have um, um, a common base or a common emitter configuration, the output here will be a high uh, output impedance but if you have uh, a common collector because sometimes you may want to communicate the amplifier with another circuit that is of low uh, input impedance so if your output it must match the impedance of the next uh, module that the circuit will be communicating with okay so now we have done three configurations but we have not looked at the amplifiers yet we have just looked at the behavior of the devices hang on uh, it may not make much sense just yet, but this uh, information will be useful when you do DC biasing. So before we leave this topic, let's have a look at the input-output characteristics okay, of the BJT device if it is connected in an amplifier. So the most important thing here to look at is this regions of operation. Okay, The output characteristics, this is an output characteristics in um, of a common emitter configuration of IC versus VCE uh, shows the re region of operating points. Okay, What it does is that it shows the whole region of operating points that you can choose from to ensure that the maximum ratings are not being exceeded and the output signal exhibits minimum distortion. So you know if you're going to 
operate in the cutoff and saturation, you're going to have some minimum distortion. And if you exceed all these levels here, okay, you will be exceeding the maximum ratings. So most amplifi amplification, the device needs to operate in the active region. At lower end of the scales, here, cutoff region is uh, defined by IB equals to 0 microamp and saturation region is defined by VCE is less than VCE set. Of course, it's not exactly zero, but it's just some, some kind of estimation. So the maximum ratings, okay, uh, refers to the horizontal line for the maximum collector current, this one. Okay. The vertical line at the maximum collector to emit the voltage, so you have a VCE max here as well as the curve uh, power consumption max or power dissipation maximum. So your region of operation is the one in the middle here. So you may have a BJT and you want to operate it in a circuit. You have to check in the circuit that it would be connected to the biasing on the BJT. Will it be within this region of operation? Okay. So if it falls here, you know that it's not going to be an amplifying device. If it falls here as well, it will not be an amplifying device. It may, it, you may want it to be in those regions if it is for other uh, purposes, uh, specific purposes. But in for the purpose of amplifiers, you want it to be in the active mode. And if you uh, operate at any of these values here, outside here, it would be exceeding the maximum rating. So your operating point for the BJT has to be in the regions of operation, meaning let's say you know that if you put the BJ, if the if you put the transistor in the circuit, you're gonna have let's say VCE 10 volts, mm, IC uh, uh, with an IB of 30 microamps. You know that your IC is gonna be here. It's gonna be the operation is gonna be somewhere in the middle here, so you're safe. But if let's say you're going to apply um, IC, uh, VCE at 10 volts but your IB is going to be about 80 microamps you know that you're going to be exceeding the um, maximum collector current and the uh, power maximum power ratings okay so that's not safe or another example would be let's say you want to apply um, in a situation where IB is uh, 50 microamps and uh, VCE is going to be um, uh, say about 15 volts okay um, you know that that would be uh, because looking at this plot here it would be uh, exceeding the uh, power consumption power consumption maximum curve here okay so um, input and output characteristics okay uh, because this was an example using a common emitter configuration so the power dissipation curve here would be um, uh, VCE um, multiplied by uh, IC but if it's going to be a common base it will be VCB uh, multiplied with IC and with a common collector configuration it will be VCE times IE okay whatever it is uh, let's have another example here let's say because we know the maximum collector current here is uh, 50 milliamps okay at what point does it start to fall here okay um, by calculation, uh, usually the data sheet would say what the maximum power consumption is. So in this case, if we have decided that it should be 300 milliwatts, we know that at this point it would start to fall and uh, at about uh, VCE about six volts. Okay, at this point, so it becomes a curve because it's going to be um, IC times VCE, and until it hits this um, uh, maximum uh, VCE. Uh, which is uh, 20 volts, uh, where IC should be about 15 milliamps. So whatever it is, whenever we want to decide um, a point for BJT to operate, it must be within this safe operation region. So why is the input and output characteristics important? The input and output characteristics are often provided in data sheets. The reason is because it provides a visual description of the transistor behavior under a range of biasing levels. Okay, you have a Q point and it can be defined for the BJT operation and can be, that would be required when you're biasing circuit. Or alternatively, a Q point can be found if the BJT is applied to an already designed biasing circuit. You want to know whether it works for your transistor or not. 
Okay, so for pen and paper analysis in ELE 424, you might have to do load line analysis in which this family of curves at the back here, with the blue lines, this represents a transistor. Okay, but the circuit that the BJT is connected to provides a linear line, which is this black line, okay, uh, that can be drawn uh, onto the output characteristics. And the intersection of the line that came from the circuit to the known current levels of the output characteristics defines the operating point called the Q point. So if you know IB and you know this line here, you would be able to decide what VCE and IC, which is the output uh, voltage and current, is going to be. Okay, more examples on Q point location. So if you say you want to operate in point A, this was just an example that I uh, mentioned a few slides ago. Point A, that would be no bias and it will not amplify. Point B, device is in the active region, you're good. If an AC small signal is applied, voltages and current can safely swing positive. Okay, if the IC changes, positive and negative values with the exceeding uh, ratings a lower limit. Okay, so the oscillation is quite safe around here. Point C. Point C device is an active region, but if an AC small signal is applied and there is a possibility of going to cut off saturation, let's say you um, oscillate around here, and if the signal is a bit too big, you might uh, hit the clo uh, lower limits. Um, and that um, that would be close to where uh, non-linearity behavior uh, may be stronger. So point D here is also in the active region but if an AC small signal is applied there is a possibility of exceeding maximum ratings here it's a possibility of going to cut off or saturation and here it is possibility of going uh, of exceeding maximum ratings okay so why are we talking a lot about the BJT um, if it carries an AC small signal is because after this, after this that we have covered this uh, BJT device, we will look at how the BJT will be biased to turn it on in a circuit so that it can uh, receive an uh, AC small signal to act as an amplifier so that when it goes, uh, it delivers an output uh, that amplifies uh, the signal, input signal that it receives without distorting it. And that would be the last part of BJT, which is BJT AC analysis covered in EALE 424. So we're done. Next, we'll have a look at uh, BJT DC biasing video 2. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.